Hello and welcome to the channel, or welcome back if you are so inclined. In today's video, we're taking a look at these, the new entry-level offering from Razer, the Barracuda X. Now this thing retails for around 100 pounds or 100 USD, so let's check it out. Now for the microphone of this headset, now bear in mind this does come in at 100 USD, so it is an entry-level mic on an entry-level headset, you need to bear that in mind, but Razer do say that this is a hyper clear cardioid mic, which is always good. I love words like hyper. They always get me excited, but let's uh, let's check it out. Now in terms of the settings for the recording on this mic, I'm just recording it through OBS. I've got it set to about 85% input. I would always recommend doing that. Even if you're just connecting through game chat or party chat through Xbox, anything, I turn your input volume down slightly just to prevent it from clipping. Your friends will thank you, trust me. Now with this microphone, Every headset around this level, around the entry level, the wireless ones specifically at around £100, they all sound remarkably similar. This one's no different to me. There's nothing in it that stands out. It doesn't cut away from the rest. I prefer that it's not as nasally as others, but that's about it. The microphone itself is exactly what you'd expect for this price of headset, and I'm not necessarily disappointed with it. I'd had no complaints from my friends when it's playing online, so happy days with that. But you let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this a decent mic for a £100 headset? But there we are. Let's move on. Now Razer do say the 40mm drivers on these things use the same Triforce technology as seen on the Black Shark V2 series, which did sound pretty good. But Triforce, for those of you that are unaware, is Razer's way of saying they've discovered how to separate mids, treble and bass, which is all very good. A big pat on the back for Razer. Now this headset does carry that typical Razer tone. It's very bass heavy, but in gaming, it doesn't become overwhelming or oversaturated. You, you do get good separation to the mids and the treble. In music and movies, however, not so much. The bass becomes quite overwhelming, quite saturating. Given that this headset has no software to come with it, you can't adjust the EQ yourself. In terms of gaming, though, they do sound very good. The stereo is pretty spot on. Now, in terms of the build quality of this headset, the first thing that we should mention is that it is pretty much an all plastic design, with the only visible piece of metal to the end user being here on the extension arms, which do sound rather good. And considering it is an all plastic construction, almost, the rattle test, it sounds quite good. Everything sounds tight. Everything sounds where it needs to be. Other than that, let's just start at the top. We have the obligatory Razer branding emblazoned across the top of the headband. And on the underside from that, we do have what feels like not necessarily a great deal amount of padding, which is encased under this pleatherette, which looks rather good and it does settle into design rather well. Coming down from that, as mentioned, we have the extension arms, the metallic extension arms. And at the bottom of that arm, we do have these solid plastic collars, which hold this swivel point. Now these ear cups do move on the vertical and the horizontal axis which is all very good and then you've got these two arms now they are rather solid although they're plastic there's not a great deal of pinch i can feel a bit of movement when i push them together but not a great deal and the plastic over the outside of the ear cup itself is solid which does offer some sound isolation it's a rather nice looking design and you do just have the razor logo no rgb anywhere on this headset at all down at the bottom of the left ear cup, we do have this mic, which is a detachable mic, and it just uses a, a 3.5 milli connector for it. Now, this is a keyed connector, which is a good thing, because this microphone itself, hiding under the pop filter, is a cardioid pattern mic, so you do need the mic to be facing you for this to work effectively. Now, all of the action is on the left ear cup, so we have the power button. Just here, it's just one of those that you hold down for a... I don't know, an unspecified amount of time until the blue light comes on to let you know you're there. You also have this, the volume wheel, which... It feels rather cheap. It it feels like it grates almost as you move it. So there's nothing there that adds a bit of class. But again, this is a hundred pound headset, so not that bad. And then you have the mute switch, which is just the depression switch. Now, when that depression switch is up, you can see a little green line around the bottom to let you know that you're unmuted. And when it's in, you are muted. You don't get any feedback through the earpiece that I can tell for this to let you know that you're muted or not. So I'd always just check with your finger and be mindful not to hit the overly excitable volume controls. Now, on the inside of the ear cup, we've got this, we see it quite a lot now, this sort of aero weave material to cover up what feels like memory foam 
on the ear cup itself. Now this is quite a generous amount of padding that they've given us. It's about two thirds of an inch thick, which is rather good, but there is no padding underneath the material that covers the driver housing itself. So you do feel a bit of rub. Not so bad for me because these are rather small ear cups and I have rather large ears, so I'm pretty much trapped on the outside. But for people with smaller ears, you will be able to feel the inside of the drivers with these. Just be mindful of that. Now in terms of the style, these things look rather good. I do like them. They're kind of sleek. They sort of just sit to your head. They're not quite as aviatory as the, uh, what are they called? The V2 Pro, for instance, but they do feel kind of slick. I do like them. They, they're just comfortable. They look good. They're $100. That's not a bad issue at all. Not a bad issue at all. I kind of like them. I don't necessarily like all plastic things, but pretty good. Let's move on. Now, in terms of comfort, like I said, these things come in at only 250 grams, so you shouldn't expect any sort of heavy weight on your head at all. And I did previously mention the uh, ungenerous amount of padding on the inside underneath this pleather of the headband itself, but honestly, you don't really need it. The weight itself is pretty much held up without suspension by the ear cups themselves. The clamping force, yes, it's only around medium, but that's all it needs to be. At this weight, this thing's fantastic. You can barely feel it. Now, after very long gaming sessions on very hot days, which believe it or not, here in the UK, we have had a heat wave, which has been very nice. However, the pleatherette, I did feel a very warm, distinct strip across my head. Now, around my ears themselves, nothing at all. The air weave material is very good. It just, it kept, kept relaxed. There was none of this. Ugh. None of that having to take effect with these. They were just very, very comfortable. Like I said, the only downside was the, the choice of pleather across the top. I just felt a warm strip. Now, one thing I should point out, and I did mention this when I was talking about the build quality. Now, the headset itself, these earpieces do move on the vertical and the horizontal axis. The problem being, when you put these around your neck, like this, you'd think you could turn them that way to sit in, but you can't. They lock off at about 20 degrees, so you have to turn them this way around, which in some instances has its advantages. If you're just pulling it around your head on mute, you can still hear your friend speaking, you can still hear what's going on. However, the, the arms that connect the ear cup to the headband start to press rather uncomfortably into your neck. And I don't necessarily like that. It almost feels as if they've been put on the wrong way around. Now, I don't want to say that they have, but that's genuinely what it feels like to me. But wearing them on your head, very comfortable. Wearing them around your neck, absolutely not. They're horrendous, but yeah. They're a very comfy headset. The 250 grams is the bit that does it, but you can wear these for hours. And so in terms of comfort, I have to give this a massive win because it genuinely is extremely comfortable. There we are, let's move on. So what comes in the box of this $100 headset? Well, the same usual stuff, to be perfectly honest. We get the headset, of course. We also get some paperwork from Razer, all very lovely, but we get these guys, stickers. Thank you, Razer, for these glorious stickers for the children, it'll give them entertainment for hours i'm sure and then we get the good stuff so we get the 3.5 milli cable and um, predominantly used if you run out of charge you can just plug this into your pc it is a four pole connector so you can you know up and down and all that jazz it's also useful if you want to use this on xbox one um, or xbox series x you can just wire this into the controller all very lovely the cable is rubberized so it's definitely not braided it's a very uh tactile feeling rubber whatever very very lovely then we get this the 2.4 gigahertz receiver now this is exactly the same as the one that came with the Arctis one which I've got around somewhere behind me in fact a lot of this headset feels like it was manufactured in the same plant and they've just got the newer generation with the type c connector on it which is all very very lovely I didn't mention by the way this headset is type c charging so you do get fast charging which is all very nice none of that micro b nonsense now this is kind of a cool thing because you can connect it to this so although it is a Type-C connector, if you don't have a Type-C connector on your PC or any of the devices you're using this on, but you do have a Type-A, you can just whack this in and you get this at the end that you just plug the receiver into. So if you are on PC, the way I had this set up, I just plug the USB into the back of my computer and ran the wire up around the back of my desk so I got the receiver in front of me. More because, I don't know, I just wanted to test everything out and make sure it works. Now this is very, very good, the connector for the Switch. It does have a little lip at the bottom, exactly like the Arctis one. So even if you do have a case over the top of it, there is enough room to get this connected into the bottom. And it was seamless to get it connected as well, which is a first on Switch. But there we are. Everything here is sort of rubberized. You can feel it's kind of cheap. They do have the razor green blocking on the inside of the USB connector, but the connector itself doesn't look remarkably well made. But that's what you'd expect for an entry level headset. This thing is entry level. Whenever you see Razer put the X moniker, it doesn't mean extreme 
like everybody else, it means entry level. So there we are. The stuff that come with the box is totally expected. You get the receiver because it's wireless. You get a 3.5 milli aux cable, which is all very good. And you get a USB cable with a receiver at the end just to pop that in. Lovely stuff. So what are these things actually compatible with? Now Razer do make a point of saying that these are a 4-in-1 multi-platform device and that's all wireless and they're not wrong. These work seamlessly on PC, Switch, Android and the PlayStation 4 slash 5. All very good, all very wireless, massive win. If you want to use these on the Xbox you do get the 3.5 milli cable that you can just jack into the controller itself. But yeah, in terms of compatibility, nowadays this is fairly standard, nothing much to write home about, but for a £100 headset to be compatible seamlessly and wirelessly with that many devices, thumbs up to Razer. Well done. Very well done. So would I recommend these? For 100 USD? Yeah, I think that I would. The audio is good ish for 100 USD. The mic is definitely passable for the price. The comfort is outstanding. That 250 grams. Happy days, Razer. You've done a cracking job with that. But yeah, for me, this is a definite recommend for 100 USD. I will try and do some comparisons with other headsets around this price range, if not a bit cheaper, just to see what you could get. But yeah, well done, Razer. Happy days with that. So if you like what you saw, everyone, do leave a thumbs up. It helps out immensely. If there's any headsets you want to see me review, just leave a comment below and I'll try my best to A, get back to you, but I'm very busy, and B, just get the headset and get it reviewed for you also. But yeah, thank you very much for watching, everyone. I will have a link to these in the description below. Maybe not on release date of the video. I'm not sure these are on Amazon yet, but when they are, it will be there. Yeah, have a good day, morning, noon, night, wherever you are in the world. Goodbye.